it's horrible. You know, it should have, it's, it's to us, it's a, just a toxic piece of land right now. Julie Bloom is talking about this piece of property right outside her house in New London. A factory that employed more than 200 building high end baby furniture is now this still. is what's left a vacant building and deemed a public nuisance made his money and left everybody with a huge expense, a huge mess. The weeds, the dead trees, the fallen glass and the, the building that's falling apart. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, come on, let's make the guy accountable. Infrastructure still here. That guy is Eric Spiritus, president of Wisconsin based Niagara Worldwide, a company that redevelops properties all over the country. Spiritus bought this property back in 2005 and had plans to redevelop the land into something useful. But in the long run, what happened was um, a salvage operation occurred. He tore out the valuable items on the property and sold them and left a substantial pile of. Uh, Wreckage. Hager says that after a period of time and several instances in court, the city was forced to hire a contractor to clean up the site. But in the process, the contractor ground up asbestos roofing material, a cleanup that cost the city about $200,000. Spiritus told me he pleaded to the city not to take control. Please don't take over this demolition. I have wood that's saleable. I have materials that are segregated. I have demolition to take place, and I had demolition going on. But they seized it. They took it over and they and you know, for the cost that they took it over, they contaminated the site. Once it was clean and we got a no further action letter from the state, I got charged two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for all that and they put that on the taxes and so um, I ended up getting charged for I guess the the contracting mistake, etc. And you can't do much developing when property's damaged. The DNR checked the property for asbestos and the case went all the way to the Department of Justice where it declared the property asbestos free. We are absolved of any issue that's right. left to that property regarding the asbestos contamination that was left there by the contractor. Spiritus says the battles in New London just slowed the process. They did what they did and unfortunately their actions slowed the project down another five years. The pace of the project is similar to another here in northeast Wisconsin. The Miro company left Manitowoc in 2002 and Mayor Justin Nichols said several developers owned the building before Spiritus bought it with plans to renovate the building for apartments and condos. But Manitowoc's journey may sound familiar. Copper pipes, a lot of wood floors, bricks, a lot of valuable things had been taken out from 2002 until we finally tore it down. Three years ago, Spirit has told Local 5 progress would be made on the building relatively quick. I can tell you that in the next several weeks, you'll have the three-story building down, gone, and you'll have a nice open area in there that we can work and we can plan the next phase of the construction and demolition. We saw some progress, so we backed off, but in us backing off, things Again, we're pushed out year after year after year after year. And that's when we just uh, bit the bullet and said, uh, no more. Earlier this year, Manitowoc was about to condemn the property when Spiritus donated it to the city, who then began demolition. But it cost taxpayers about $2.4 million to level the building. The city has to determine, is it in the public's best interest to push hard enough where the owner could leave when the owner is telling us they want to do stuff or they will do stuff, uh, or, or, or wait it out, or, or push forward with condemnation. In Manitowoc, we spent a million and a half dollars. I couldn't have spent another dollar until I finally had to donate the property because I couldn't, I couldn't put another dollar in um, to take it down the road. Um, with, with where the scrap in the market was, and so I moved on. And a similar situation in Brokaw at the Wausau paper mill. The mill closed down in 2012, leaving 450 people out of work. Spiritus also bought up the property, but sold it just months after purchasing it. And the town tried to block a sale from Wausau paper to a developer. They didn't do that, but what they did is they blocked my sale of the property to anyone else. And so I, I did work through that and I got it sold within 11 months to the next user. Village President Jeffrey Weisenberger says he received advice from Mayor Nichols about Spiritus owning the property. He told me that uh, this guy will come in and, and promise you the world and you'll never see any of it but by the time he's done and gone with the building you won't even be able to uh, turn on a light bulb. I'm a property owner that can own, manage, maintain and hold the property until such time
time that it can be demolished and transitioned. And if a city moves forward and they want to seize the property for cause or for reason, they've got to deal with it responsibly. Meanwhile, in New London, Spiritus maintains that these communities would see progress if they were patient. So basically from what you're telling me is that if the cities had just stuck with you and with their plan, eventually they would be saving the money that they would have spent in demolition costs. Absolutely. If they didn't do business with me um, in New London or Manitowoc uh, um, or, in, or in Brokaw, I had to do the business on my own. Spiritus says this is based off other properties he's transformed across the country on a larger scale. I have properties uh, in, in other states, you know, that I could, I could lift off and um, up east at the power plant. I have another property um, in New York that I've sold off four of the five components, and it took 10 years. I mean, development is not a fast business. So these are two similar areas that are, uh, New London, unfortunately, is even smaller than Manitowoc. There's just not enough economic development dollars or economic activity to take it to the next level. Mayor Nichols says his city learned a lesson and created an ordinance that any building over 100,000 square feet in the city that has been remodeled or needs to be demolished has to go through the Common Council's approval before the developer gets a building permit, something that was not implemented in the past. The reason for that is we don't want people going in and stripping these large buildings just for what they're worth, their copper, their wood, whatever what Mr. Spiritus was doing, and then leave an empty shell which we ended up with. And Nichols encourages other communities to be more involved with the entire process. We're seeing more and more in Mantuac and other places, people, LLCs especially, coming in, purchasing the building for cheap and stripping them for what they're worth. Uh, cities need to get more involved and aggressive with these types of uh, businesses that come in and do this. Five Investigates found that just two weeks ago, Spirit has sold all of the property in New London to a new developer. He says he's confident that it's in the right hands and it will move forward. And the residents and city leaders of New London hope it's not just another empty promise. For Five Investigates, I'm Nate Stewart.